Hello there. Today we have Alan Kamisa, CEO of Kalidi Biotherapeutics, which trades on the NYSE American under the ticker symbol CLDI. Alan, thank you for being with us. Thank you, Craig, for having me here. Can you provide us, Alan, with an overview of Kalidi Biotherapeutics and its position in the expansive field of cancer treatment? The, uh, the whole area of uh, immunotherapy is, is how do you get the immune system to attack cancer? And so what Kalidi does is we have an active ingredient and the whole, you know, the whole sector called oncolytic virus uh, activates the, the immune system. It lyses tumor cells and then activates the immune system. But where Kalidi is different is we have a cell delivery platform that protects that virus to be more powerful enough, amplifies it, so it can really overcome nine, 10 pints of blood that's in the human body. Uh, so a lot of mouse studies show that you can it's effective, but when you go to the human body, uh, it gets inactivated. So our cell delivery platform is the really novel therapy that we have. Alan, for those of us who are not deeply acquainted with the science, could you explain in layman's terms what that oncolytic virotherapy is and how Kalidi's platform stands out in this innovative area of cancer treatment? Well, an oncolytic virus is, is you know, I, I use the uh, analogy that your body recognizes a cold virus, it's foreign and attacks it. Uh, the cancer cells aren't recognized by the body as foreign, it grows uh, unabated. Uh, and so the way you trick the body is you inject a virus there into the tumor cell and the immune system recognizes it as foreign and it starts attacking uh, that tumor cell because there's a virus injected. So. That's the theory of it, and um, the, again, where we're differentiated is that we want to protect the virus long enough to amplify and kill enough tumor cells uh, and, and cause a delayed immune response. One likens it to a Trojan horse, is that about right? That's correct, it's, uh, it's like the Trojan horse or stealth bomber where it's, it's invisible uh, to the body. Amazing. How big is the addressable market, Alan, for Collegi's therapies? and the unmet medical needs that you're aiming to fulfill? Well, the, the beauty of the technology is stem cells gravitate to any necrotic damaged tissues. So we believe we're universal in that we're not a small molecule, we're not targeting one specific cancer. We can address dozens of solid tumors right now with our supernova platform. So we, we believe the biggest market is lung and then obviously breast, prostate, but we've, we've actually had our first generation product in 26 patients, and we call it the Tologus trial. That's fascinating, Alan. Now, could you provide us an overview of the entire pipeline? I wanna know about their current stages of development and especially what makes each program unique. Yes, sir, Craig, the, the most advanced program we have is NeuroNova, which is um, using adenovirus in combination with neurostem cells. That already had a phase one trial uh, in Northwestern, and it was published in Lancet. So our most advanced trial right now is already in the clinic uh, for recurring glioblastoma. We're doing the trial. Uh, the headquarters is in uh, City of Hope, Pasadena. We dosed seven patients already. Uh, we should have a readout this summer at ASCO. Uh, the second trial that's going to be launched and FDA approved is going to be at Northwestern for newly diagnosed glio. Um, and that's going to be probably announced in the next 30 to 45 days. That's a phase 1B2A. The significance of these trials is that the glio is a very deadly area, and um, the uh, medium life span is, is, is a certain uh, time frame, and we can extend the life with these stem cells. Uh, we killed, if we kill the tumor cells uh, with uh, repeated doses, we, it's very promising because the first, first uh, publication was very, very well received at Lancet. Uh, and the third asset we have is Supernova, which is targeting multiple solid tumors. Uh, that'll be in the clinic late this year. That's, uh, we did a, a safety trial of 26 patients uh, several years ago using the patient's own stem cells. Now we're going to use uh, allogeneic cells, which is more universal and it's, it's, it's more broader that we can uh, make more of this product to thousands and thousands of uh, patients. So that one is going to be targeting triple negative breast, head and neck, melanoma, sarcoma, uh, and those are the type of indications we're targeting. 
You know, Alan, it's so exciting. You're working on glioblastoma, a truly deadly killer. You're working with City of Hope and Northwestern household names. I would expect that there are going to be some milestones and catalysts coming up in the near term that we can expect. Could you elaborate, please? The, the key milestone is, is that um, we, if we can show 50% uh, progression-free and increase the medium standard of, uh, of lifespan for the, these patients for six to eight months, it should be a groundbreaking um, milestone to be potentially approved uh, on a registrational phase two. So you don't have to do phase three with glio because it's such an unmet need. Uh, but we, uh, we're all excited about that milestone. The other one is starting the phase 1B2A at Northwestern, which is now the second trial that Dr. Lesniak, the chief of neurosurgery, is going to conduct. Um, and we also have the President Biden's doctor, Dr. Alfred Young, who's on our advisory board, who tried to save his son of glioblastoma. Uh, uh, and so it, was a, it had promise. It was a naked virus, uh, but it wasn't powerful enough to do the job. So he's a big fan of using stem cells to deliver virus for, for uh, cancer, brain cancer patients. Very exciting, Alan. Let's turn now to your great leadership team. I was just so impressed with your extensive experience, including growing companies significantly in scale and revenue. How does your great experience and the experience of your other team members shape the strategic direction and long-term potential of Kaliti? That's a good question. We, uh, we believe that we have a very collaborative environment. Um, uh, I've got pen and recognition. Some of my executives have been with, with me in other companies. And um, I'm really pleased that um, we really know how to move the ball when it comes to potential licensing and, and uh, business partnerships. So we have a strong scientific, but also a strong business team in combination, which is rare. All right, Alan, I'm going to put you on the spot here. You ready? Yes, sir. All righty. Now, give us the essential value proposition. Why should any investor take an interest in your company right now? You know, we're undervalued. Um, you know, we, we had a valuation before we went public, and we believe that um, we just didn't have the proper IR, PR uh, 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 support initially, and now we're re realizing now, fundamentally, the technology is strong. We're we get getting state and federal grants, uh, and so we believe that the um, um, state of California awarded three grants uh, in the last year and a half, $20 million on our platform. So it shows validation by you know, agencies that we have the technology. Thank you, Alan. What a fascinating story. Thanks again.